Good morning, Wadarapa. This is Arrow FM 92.7. My name is Anthony Aporo, and I work for Age Concern. Concern. And this is our uh, start of our monthly meeting. Every third Thursday of the month, we've got a program running called Aging with Attitude. And because our concern is about for the older people in the Wadarapa. And so today, we're going to look at our service. And I've got two lovely ladies with me today, uh, Rachel Ingham and Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay Parks. And we're going to share our, what our service is all about. And I think I'd like to just let them introduce themselves to our serv- uh, to you today. Rachel Lindsay. Oh, kia ora koutou. Hey everyone. My name's Rachel and I work for Age Concern Wairarapa, as Anthony said. Um, I work in the area of health promotion, mainly exercise. And also um, I'm very excited to be part of the new Buddy Up program that we're running. That sounds great. Lindsay? Good morning everybody, my name is Lindsay, Um, I work in the Wairarapa office as well. Uh, I am the AVS coordinator, Uh, AVS stands for Accredited Visiting Service, Uh, so I am the person in charge of looking after our volunteers and our clients who make use of the service. So when you talk about um, the AVS service, Lindsay, what's that all about? Why AVS? So AVS exists um, as a a service to help overcome social isolation with our older people in the community. Uh, So social isolation can come around um, because people are perhaps away from their family or their family are living away from them now, Um, maybe because of mobility issues that they can't get out and about like they used to. Um, So anybody that is at home and feeling a bit lonely Um, not having those social connections that they used to have. Um, We have a service in place where we can match up volunteers, volunteer visitors, who can come and meet um, with individual clients in their home or out and about if that develops into that, and uh, just provide some companionship. Um, Usually it's around conversation, um, things that they're interested in, whether that's shared interests or activities or even history, um, or just that they might have the same sense of humour and they can get on um, and have a bit of a chat about anything that's going on um, in their lives. And it's a, it's a service where the volunteer comes along and meets with the visitor usually once a week for about an hour at a time. And they, uh, they come along and spend that time with their, with their client in their home and the friendship and the, the companionship develops over time. And from what I have learnt um, as I'm recently in this job, that there are some relationships, some matches that are going back many years now and these people are very much um, great friends, if not almost part of the family. Mm, nice. That sounds really good. Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a lovely service and it's um, people I've, I find are a little bit nervous to start off with, but we try our best to match people up, um, visitors and clients, so that they you know, almost hit the ground running, that they might have something in common and they can sort of pick up on that. That's the icebreaker. They can pick up on that and um, and just continue to get to get to know each other. It's a free service, so there's no charge to the client um, at all. And um, obviously with our visitors being our volunteers, uh, they very kindly offer up their time um, to spend uh, with, with their client. Um, usually, as I mentioned, it's it's something that's done person to person, so it's in the client's home or, you know, if they decide to get together and, and maybe head out for a coffee. Um, but we recognise at this time in our world, it's a little bit different and people are a bit hesitant about getting out and about or, or meeting up um, in person, particularly if they are obviously doing other activities and perhaps been exposed to, um, you know, possible infection or possible um, COVID-related cases, that people are a little bit more hesitant about doing that. But um, we've got a, a, a strong reply for that, and that's to stay in contact in other ways, to find other ways to keep that social connection happening. And um, a lot of our clients and visitors are keeping in touch over the phone. Um, it can be a little bit tricky for some of our clients who might be a little bit hard of hearing or, or struggle with, with holding a phone or, or anything like that. But actually for a lot of our, 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 our client relationships, um, it's actually working really well. And we've even got some people who have managed to learn how to use their mobile phone for texting. Oh, good. Yeah, and they're texting each other and um, they sort of feel like they've entered the modern world, uh, which is quite sweet. Um, And also email even. Um, You know, some of our older people in their homes are, are very happy to stay in touch over email. And, uh, and it almost gives them something to look forward to. They open up their computer in their inbox and they find that there's a message waiting for them. 
um, we've even got some people that have started writing letters to each other. Nice. Oh, great. That's the old nice. style. The old writing. style of writing letters. <laughs> and, uh, and even postcards, if they see, you know, maybe a visitor will be out and they see a it's lovely nice postcard too. or a, a picture and they think yeah. that would be nice, that their client would enjoy it, and they nice. send a postcard. Oh, great. So it's, okay. there's lots of ways to keep in touch. But AVS is very much about providing that social connection, keeping people... Um, animated and interested in you know what's going on in the world and uh, you know again it's, it's troubling times it's worrying times for people and so having someone to have that chat to um, you know it doesn't have to be to be big and deep and meaningful sometimes it's just about what's happening and what's growing in their gardens and, and that's what's important to them and, and that's absolutely fine but it you know it, it tends to steer away from that sort of caring or you know home care type um, relationship that some of our older people have at home where they might have someone come in and service their home or help with the housework and so on um, it's it's not so much about that it's about having that someone to chat to. Mm. So I was just thinking while you're saying about um, connectedness and um, one of the agencies that could be of service is Digital Seniors. Mm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Mm. So, you know, I was thinking some, what, someone come in with a Zoom or something like that. Yeah. We've got another service that can offer support. Mm. Yes. So mm. that, uh, To learn how to use that technology at home. Learn how to learn yeah. that technology. Do yeah. they, well... Yes, at the moment they're doing home, but they, they've got a home service, so yeah. they'll actually come to people's houses and, and help you set up your... Yeah. I was visiting a, a new client the other day, and um, while I was there, he had someone from Digital mm. Seniors oh, really? come, yeah, mm. come in and help him set up his new television mm. so that he could do mm. um, sort of video calling with his family. That yeah, really yeah, cool. it was oh, lovely. It was, just yeah. Little, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Instead of on a little tablet or a phone or something yeah. like that, it's got this enormous big television in its, in yeah. its room. So this is just a plug for Digital Seniors? Yeah, they're fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic yeah. organisation. Do we know where yeah. their, um, their rooms are? Is it in the sure departmental building? I'm not sure where they're based at the moment, but um, if anyone's got any inquiries, they can call us in the first instance and we Absolutely. can we can find that out for okay. them. And find that, yeah. yes. Just so everyone knows, our um, phone number is 06 Great. I'm um, just asking about if someone wanted to be referred to the service, yeah, sure. how do they do that? Yeah, that's a really great question, Anthony. So there's lots of ways that we receive our referrals. Um, sometimes our clients are, are visiting their doctor or perhaps they're going through some services, some outpatient services at the hospital. So through Wairapa DHB or your local medical centre, you can always ask one of the nursing staff or your doctor there um, about the service or mention it to them. They are all very aware of the service and um, they can put through a referral and that comes to me directly. And then from there, I get in touch with that, um, with that client and we sort of take it from there. Or if you are a family member or have a family member who you think would benefit from the service, you can call me directly. Um, or if you are in fact that person at home and you're listening to this and you think I would love to have a visitor come and mm, meet nice. me you can call <laughs> me directly that's absolutely fine and you can call on that number that we just mentioned that 0637 um, my name is on the answer message on there or you'll speak to our lovely receptionist Sue and she'll put you through to me um, and we can take it from there and it's you know it's it, there's no rush there's no urgency um, about getting in touch with me it's just when it feels right or that that referral is ready to be made that can come through to me and from there what happens is I, I will get in touch with the person who the referral is you know for um, and we have a bit of a chat over the phone and uh, what I try and do is make a time with that person uh, to go and meet them in their own home and learn a, bit, a little bit more about them and um, why they think they, they feel the, they need the service but also what are their interests and, and you know who are they and, and what sort of rocks their boat. And then from there I gather all of that information, I take that back to my office and, um, and do my absolute best to match that person up with one of our volunteer visitors um, who, yeah, like I say, shares interests and um, or I think would be a good match from a personality point of view because I will have met them too, the, the visitors. And um, from there we would create uh, a meeting which would be an, almost like an introduction. I feel like a, I'm a, a matchmaker, <laughs> <laughs> getting people together. Um, and we sort of arrange that first meeting in that, um, in that client's home and um, I'm there for that first meeting, make sure that everything goes okay. Nice. And uh, and then I leave them to it. I <laughs> sneak out the back door. <laughs> and, uh, and I hope that everybody, you know, no, it's fine. It's everyone, you know, they, they have a chance to get to know each other a little bit better. And um, it's a service that we um, keep in touch with everybody 
you know, during the, the time that they're together as well. So I leave, you know, let them have a few meetings, get them under their belt, and then um, get in touch with both parties, both the visitor and the client, and just see how things are going. Because sometimes maybe I get my match a bit wrong, but I try my best to get it right. <laughs> and uh, and um, we just sort of check in and, and make sure that everybody's happy and that it's working, because it's all about making it worthwhile, that time spent is worthwhile, yes. and, um, and people are getting out of it. Uh, what they want and our visitors very much uh, love doing it too it's it's a very much a big part of their lives and um, we have a, a big team of volunteer visitors who usually get assigned to to one of our one client at a time some of them have two um, but it's usually one and um, and the stories and the the enjoyment that they get out of it um, it's it's very much worthwhile for them too. Uh, very reciprocal, mm. yeah. And our visitors can be, you know, anyone, any walk of life, anyone that's got that time to maybe spend, you know, about a one hour once a week. Um, you can be from any age, uh, any demographic. Um, as long as you've got that time, you can come along and um, and and share your time with that with that older person. Um, we've got a lot of clients who are farming folk or used to have a farm or own a big farm and maybe they've moved into town or they've become a little bit more isolated from that farming community that they had, um, you know, in their working years and they just want someone to talk farming with. Mm -hmm. So if there's any visitors or any volunteers out there that (laughs) enjoy farming and know about, um, you know, one end of a sheep from another and and can talk tractors and and, uh, how fast or slow the grass is growing, um, we'd love to hear from you. (laughs) I've got lots of clients waiting to talk farming. Um, Since you were talking about um, visitors, Mm. how do you... How do you become a visitor? Yeah. Yeah, so we um, that's another great question because that's just as important as, as finding the clients as, as finding the visitors to meet with them. And uh, we have um, we have a team of, of visitors. I've got about, I think, about 40 or so um, that are currently meeting with, with clients at the moment, but we're always looking for more. And um, you can, same thing, get in touch with the, the Age Concern office. Um, you can call me directly or you can pop in sometime if you're passing. We're at the Solway Showgrounds, um, to the entrance of Fleet Street there. You'll see our building just as you come in. Uh, or get in touch through the, over the phone or through email um, and, and just let me know that you're, you're keen to, to be a, a volunteer visitor uh, for the AVS service. And we provide all the training that you would need to get into that role. It's not onerous. Um, it's just a little bit of um, you know what to expect, um, what, to, what you sort of can do, what you can't do, um, and just making sure that everybody stays safe um, in, that, in that sort of relationship. And from there, we, um, like I say, we eventually match uh, that visitor up with their, with their client. I'm there for that first meeting. And, um, and from there, sort of that person is, um, you know, just left to arrange the suitable time with their client. Um, obviously, it needs to work for both, both sides. And uh, they carry on those meetings, and um, and I provide ongoing support. So as I mentioned, I keep in touch with both sides, but very much for our visitor because they're they're giving up their time. I need to make sure that everything's working really well for them. Okay, so is there a vetting system, or how does that work? Oh, there's not so much a vetting system, but um, what you do do is you come in and um, and I again just ask a few questions um, about uh, what that visitor is interested in, um, where are the areas of interest, you know, have they had experience working uh, perhaps as a volunteer before? Um, you don't have to have previous experience, but it's just um, going through the the process of you know what to expect in that type of role. Um, we do do a police check with all of our visitors um, just to make sure that everybody stays safe um, in the in that sort of partnering up. Um, with a client Um, again all I need to do is um, get a couple of forms filled in by that visitor um, and I do all the paperwork and all the back end stuff and then from there um, we can start that training and and get that match happening oh nice Re um, you have done a lot around volunteers is that right Yes, yep, I think um, volunteers are the backbone really of our organisation. We, we actually couldn't operate without this amazing group of people who are helping us out in various ways. Um, in a little while when I talk about exercise, I'll talk about our incredible team of volunteers that are running exercise classes across Wairarapa. Um, we have off- um, volunteers helping us when we go on trips, when we have coffee mornings in our office, um, the new Buddy Up system, we'll have rely heavily on volunteers as well um, incredible group of people that are yeah we couldn't operate we couldn't do them. it without them. no 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 not, none of us in our roles i think could do could do yeah. any of it without them yeah absolutely that's so important mm. and mm-hmm. just on that subject of volunteers actually 
we need some more volunteers. We do need yeah. volunteers. We do. So we you, do need volunteers. Have you got some spare time out there that you would like to um, give to our service to help older mm. people? Mm. Um, please come and see us. Yeah. As Lindsay said, our offices uh, in the showgrounds. Just come through mm. the Fleet Street entrance. That's right. Or give us a call on 6 Double six. <laughs> yeah, we, and and for that, um, on that Anthony, we've got lots of different things that our volunteers could get involved with. And maybe if you're thinking that visiting someone is perhaps not quite right for you, we've got lots of other things that we would mm. um, really appreciate and, and could use our, our volunteers mm. for. Um, you know, whether it's helping in the office or um, helping with some mail outs and things like that. Yeah. Um, you know, if you want to get out and go for a walk and post some things for us, um, you know, we'd we'd love to hear from you. We've got lots mm. of different roles that our volunteers could help with. Mm. Yeah, we've got a lot of um, activities that they could be a part of. Yeah. Mm. And so in saying that, let's just have a song from uh, Mataka Kura from Te Rangirua o Wadarapa. Nice. Mate Kahukura, a beautiful song written by Hohepa Ta- uh, Tamihana. And so. Sorry. We talked about um, social isolation. And so we know that there's COVID happening at the moment. And yesterday, I think the daily figures were 1,160. That's a lot of people that have been um, infected with Omicron. And we also know that there has been quite a few outbreaks here in the Wairarapa. As far as I'm aware, around about 22 people, 23 people have been infected and some schools have shut down. And so I'd like to talk about, uh, do you have a plan? Because you know it's really helpful. So in saying that, um, what are some of the things that we might need for this plan? You got any ideas, ladies? So one of the, um, the because I've got, um, with AVS, we've obviously got um, people meeting up with each other and sometimes they are going out, um, you know, maybe for a coffee or a walk together. Wear your mask, bring a mask mm. and have a mask and, you know, have more than one. 
Um, have one at home, have one in the car, have one in your handbag, yeah, have yeah. one on your arm, have yep. one on your face. <laughs> <laughs> have one, you know, have more than one, I think, is the is the key message there. Um, if you're anything like me, you're sort of sometimes running out the door and you've left it at home. Um, but I've got, always got a spare one in the car. Mm. And then I've left the car and I haven't got it. I've always got a spare one in my handbag. Mm. Uh, and sometimes if I forget it in my handbag, I try and put one, uh, just put the, the elastic over my arm and I'm wearing one on my yeah, elbow. Yeah, it's um, so it's just yeah. being, um, you know, having a few extra on hand, um, I think is a really good idea. Uh, and and for our older people um, in the community and for anybody um, that's listening today and hasn't got their booster shot yet, go and get boosted. <laughs> Yeah, well, it's February. It's time. It's mm. booster it's time. month. Booster mm-hmm. month. It's booster month. I think there's and a million. There are a million people eligible for a booster. That's still waiting. Need, yeah, need to have it. So that'd be fantastic. And uh, you know, yeah. it's in, in all the messaging is about keeping yourself as safe as mm. possible, and it's making um, you know there's all these rules and regulations in place, but at the end of the day, we're all making individual choices about how we can keep ourselves and our far now safe. Uh, and some of the best things we can do is, is wearing masks and mm. getting that booster shot if you haven't yeah. got one already. And so we're really recommending um, you know, that people do that. Uh, and if you need any assistance in making those bookings or finding out is it time to get it or not, you know, there's lots of messages out there and it can feel quite overwhelming. Um, but if you need any assistance to, to look into that or even getting along to your appointment, Give us a call. Give mm, Age Concern a call. Absolutely. We're more than happy to set that up mm. for you. Um, we're more than happy, um, you know, to to arrange that meeting or that booking if we need to. And you know, maybe we even have a volunteer who can come along with you to, um, you know, to come along to that appointment if you haven't got a family member or friend who can do that with you. Um, you're welcome mm. to take along a, a support person. So, mm. just give us a call if you need any help in that area. Mm. Mm. I'm just thinking too about what what to plan for if you are going to be at home, if you are isolating, um, if you are at home, you need to be at home for a couple of weeks. What do you need to think about now to make that easier when, when... when it happens um, and obviously a really big one there is getting food and supplies and mm. having food and supplies in the house now but also um, how are you going to get food and supplies if you're at home for a while and so who might drop food off for you who maybe you can order it through the supermarket maybe you've got friends or family or neighbours who'll be able to help you get food if you um, if you're at home for a while so I think that that's really important um, and I think another really big thing is what will you do at home? What will you find to do at home to such spend a good time? Idea. Such a good thought, yeah. Think about that now. Um, you know, all those books you've been meaning to read or, um, you know, cut out crosswords from old papers or something and have a bundle nearby to do. When the, learn, Think about learning something new. Yeah. If um, digital seniors might set you up and you might decide, right, this is the opportunity to learn, learn something, flower arranging, ukulele, something that mm-hmm. you've been thinking that you'd like to do for a long time. This is You might have a lovely two-week opportunity to become an expert in a field. Um, so I think that's really important to be, to be prepared for... For what you might do if you are isolating, and I think a really big thing in there too is how you're going to keep active, how you're going to be fit, what you're going to do to um, so so that you're not sort of just just sitting like that's a I think that's a really big thing for all of us. What will our exercise be and um, during lockdown if we can't or sorry during isolation if we can't get out and yeah. yeah. I remember um, a song from Sesame Street. <laughs> Who are the people in your neighbourhood? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Are you going to sing it, Anthony? Yeah. I don't know it. I just remember. <laughs> don't make me song. sing it. Yeah, yeah. My kids, my kids yeah. still sing that today. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the question really that I have to ask is, who are the people in your neighbourhood? Mm. Yeah, kapai. Mm. People that you meet while mm. you're walking down, down the, the street. street. The people that you meet each day. Mm. That's right. Yeah. Mm. How do we know if they're going to be okay? Yeah. Mm. yeah. If we don't mm. ask that question. Yeah. Mm. You know, there are uh, some in my um, street who uh, live by themselves, yeah. and so I have to ask myself, who are they going to be the ones that are going to drop off food for mm-hmm. them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, mm. and sometimes they're thing? afraid to ask, so that's maybe right. we need to offer. Mm. I think that's a good idea. Mm. You know, that's why we need to know who's in our neighbourhood, yeah. mm. so we can uh, uh, lend a hand yeah. mm. uh, if they require it. It's easy to just say, "No, I'm all good." Mm. Yeah, but at least you know that they're all good. Mm. Yeah. Yes, I would encourage um, everyone. Absolutely. We call it neighbourhood support. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And actually, neighbourhood support and the combined councils um, of Wairarapa are about to do a big sort of um, month of March, is it? Who are the oh, people yes. in your neighbourhood? Yes, Get your to know, meet your neighbours, yeah. know who your neighbours are. Um, there's a, a, 
a poster, a postcard where you kind of where you fill in who the people are and you have this card on hand to kind of um, sort of help you think about who are those people. And, and if you have, if you don't know who to fill in on your postcard, then I guess the idea is that you'll go and meet those people and, yeah. and get them to fill in your postcard. Um, yeah. We're sending some information out about that in our um, March magazine, so if people are looking to find out a bit more, there's information there. Okay, mm. what, what is the March magazine? What's the magazine's all about? Yeah, you're right? going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Age Concern Wairarapa publishes um, a quarterly magazine called um, Active Ageing Wairarapa, and it's a magazine that we hope um, is, is of a lot of interest, to old, not just older people, but its, its target audience is older people in Wairarapa. Um, we have a lot of um, wonderful regular contributors who mm. give a lot of information about their services and how they support older people and just what they're up to. Um, uh, and things of interest as well. So a couple of our, I'll talk about a couple of our regulars. One is digital seniors. So there's always a digital seniors column. So that's another really good way to find out what they're up to and how to contact them. And they have a show here right. too, don't they? They do, they do. They do. Yeah. Yes. And there's yes. such an amazing service available in the Wairapa and, yeah. and so accessible. You know, yeah. they you know they may not be having their um, sort of group meetups at the moment, which they um, have been doing uh, in the library. But um, I I know that they're still doing you know one on one or come come Absolutely. to your home yeah, to yeah. help with something. So don't yeah. feel like that technology that you you know you might have available to you is too overwhelming. There's, there are people out there to help you um, make the most of it and make it work for you. Mm. Yeah, mm. digital seniors are amazing. Yeah, they are amazing. Um, so another one of our regular contributors is um, Mark Pacey, who is from the um, uh, Wairarapa Library and Archives, and um, he always writes a really interesting column about sort of um, historical happenings in Wairarapa, um, and that's that's really fun. He sort of um, trawls through the archives and finds amazing old images that are kind of really, really great to see. Mm. Um, and then we get really excited, actually, if we can identify somebody in the image yeah. or if somebody sees themselves there and says, yeah, I remember that, so that's quite fun. Um, we all write, the Age Concern team, and I think there are six, seven of us, that we all write a column about I, sh- I should know that yeah I? it's, it's a <laughs> moving number <laughs> <laughs> it? changes week to week <laughs> so we all write a column about what we've been up to um, we even even ask for extensions if we need it yeah yes. well, Rachel's very kind to us when we ask for <laughs> extensions oh they're very good they write they write excellent columns very oh. good so um and then we also put in information of interest. So we sort of put, might put in seasonal health information, things to think about. Um, we def- Of course, we put in information about COVID-19 um, and Omicron. Um, and our next one, um, what else do we talk about? Just community notices, how to get, if you, if you temporarily might need some help with food, how we might um, get getting meals delivered, how that sort of numbers for that. We've kind of useful community information. Um, a little bit of a community notice board, so somebody might be looking for a gardener and somebody can put, post an ad and somebody else can call and say, yep, you're the, you know, I'll garden for you. So it's just a keeping in touch kind of a tool and hopefully interesting information. Also recipes, really Lots good recipes, recipes, really good recipes yeah. for... Um, and the magazine, it's, yeah. it's seasonal, isn't it? It's quarterly, so it, it matches the season. So mm-hmm. our next one coming out, hard to believe, in March, which is only next month, mm-hmm. is autumn. Autumn, the autumn um, magazine. The autumn magazine. Yeah. So, you know, what might be growing or not growing in the garden. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the recipes usually match they do. season they do. availability yeah. and, and things like yeah. that too. So that's, yeah. that's really nice. So how do I get one of these magazines? They sound really interesting. <laughs> well, the easiest way, the easiest way to get a magazine is to become an, um, a member of Age Concern Wairarapa. For, um, and I'll, I'll just let you know that that's $25 for an individual and $40 for a couple. So that's the easiest way to get it because you are immediately on our mailing list mm-hmm. and it'll come out to your mailing box um, four times a year um, but there are other ways too like um, whenever any of us go out anywhere um, we've always got a bundle with us mm-hmm. so that we can um, pass those out and distribute them and perhaps not so much at the moment um, it depends on, on what our partners and sort of friends and organisations are doing but um, Typically, we'd leave a bundle somewhere. Um, so there might be a bundle in a doctor's surgery, or there might be a bundle at, at a library. Um, yeah, we also can we send it out digitally. So if you'd like to receive it digitally, that's a really easy way to get it. Um, you can get in touch with the Age Consent Office and ask to go on the mailing list for the magazine, and we can send you a digital copy. Um, yeah, so you've 
come across that. I think once you're aware of it, people yeah. start spotting it in all sorts they of do. places. And we get people yeah. asking, you know, sometimes if, if it's been missed or maybe someone mm. hasn't received it, we'll get the phone call to say, where's my magazine? Mm. So we must be doing something right we with must. what we're putting in it. We and uh, and um, yeah. I've been asked a couple of times um, from some of my uh, queer, hey, boy, where's my magazine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Nana, are you a member? No. no, but I want the magazine. <laughs> I read it at the doctor's said you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Well, then that's easy. I'll just get you one, put mm. you on the list. Yeah, lovely. Mm. That's all good. So, mm. you know, they're out there and mm. they are really um, valuable. Because mm. yeah. mm. in the middle of it. Yes, foolishly, I haven't yes. got one to wave oh. about. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I've got one. Oh, oh no. Something he's prepared <laughs> earlier. Look, he's a man of many talents. <laughs> so, I'll hand this to you. Oh, uh, can't Ray. I? Because you're uh, the lady of the moment. Kapai, thank you. <laughs> so the middle pages, where am I <laughs> pointing this? That, that show? Yep. So the middle pages um, sort of have a diary of our of what we're up to and all our activities mm. for the next three months. So this is the current magazine and it's showing February to April, um, our coffee mornings, our trips, our exercise classes and anything else we might be up to. Um, this is designed to pull out this yeah, middle page so that you can actually, if you're finished with the magazine, you don't necessarily want to keep the magazine, you can pull this page out, pop it in your handbag or on your fridge or something. The page before, which is about digital seniors, is there because it has dates, so it's got the dates um, and times of where you can um, come across digital seniors. What are those, um, those dates, Ari? Well, the, the, I think they are the dates for the... Oh, these ones are for a couple of special things they were doing, actually. But they sort of have weekly um, dates at libraries, but at the moment they're on hold. So mm. I think the best way um, to get them is to call them or call us. Has it got their yep. number there? It has got their number here. That's a very good point. Here we go. 0800 373 646. I'll say it again. 0800 373 646. Yep, that's that's Digital Senior's number. And then the next page of, of the four of the pull-out page is just more dates, more sort of dates of interesting things coming up and what we're up to. So that's really handy, that middle page. Yeah, that gives you a lot of a lot of kind of information about things to do, places to connect and have fun conversations, exercise. And that's yeah. a that's a really good point. It's um, you know, we're talking about AVS and the social connections and, and keeping in touch and, and having someone to talk to and you know, maybe if AVS is um is not quite the right service we you know for you or, or for a family member that you can think of um age concern organizes lots of activities mm. um mm. that you can go along and be a part of whether that's the coffee mornings yeah. or the exercise classes or yeah, trips you know yeah. um all over the Wairarapa uh into Wellington sometimes as well depending mm. on what's yeah. going on yeah. and so those are other ways you know maybe to meet someone new um, you know, to get out of the home and have somewhere to go and something to do. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a good segue in for what you want to talk about, Ari. Yeah, 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 it is. So I was going to talk about what a group of activities that come under what we call health promotion, and there are actually two of us working in this area. There's myself and then there's Kathy Cameron, who a lot of people may well know because of her work in neighbourhood support. Um, so anyhow, we I'll talk about what we offer in, the, in our sort of in our area and I'll start with exercise because I know that really well because that's um, that's the part of it that I look after um, so our exercise classes they build strength balance and all-round well-being they're really um, it's a lovely opportunity to come along um, to, to get fit to maintain fitness to socialize and have a bit of fun and we have um, we have several classes across Wairarapa and we, we really like them. We're in the process of setting up more classes. So our exercise classes are kind of graduated in terms of how strenuous they are. Um, and probably the most strenuous is our line dancing class, which mm -hmm. is on a Monday morning at the Senior Citizens Hall in Cole Street, where four, um, five absolutely amazing women um, volunteer their time to teach line dancing. And it's a fantastic class. It's um, two hours of great fun. There's a kind of a more beginnery class at um, 10.30 and then there's a more sort of advanced dancing or more um, experienced dancer at 11.30. Um, that's, that's wonderful. Um, 
big thank you to them for all they do. Um, then our sort of mid, mid-range class is called Keep Fit, and that's run by another incredible volunteer, and that happens twice a week. That's this amazing class. Um, has some chair-based exercises, some standing exercises, um, elements of Tai Chi. It's, it's really lovely. Um, and it also has a bit of dance at the end. And I think that class... Um, yeah, it's a it's a really nice sort of holistic class of of and you come out sort of feeling like you've even even sort of just come down a bit in your day mm. too with those sort of tai chi elements. It's really lovely, and then we also have steady as you go. And again, we've got an incredible master and volunteer, an incredible. Featherston volunteer delivering those classes. Um, and Steady As You Go is an excellent falls prevention and balance classes. Um, gets a lot of referrals from physio, from mm. doctors, from chiropractors, from the rehab units. You know, this gets a lot of recommendations. Our classes are really big, uh, particularly we've got a master class which is really large and we're looking um really keen to be able to sort of offer more classes in Masterton soon but the next cab off the ranks actually Martinborough and we're trying to get one in Martinborough so that we're sort of covering Wild Upper. Um, Steady Should Go was designed by um, a physio who works for Age Concern Otago and Otago Medical School so that's kind of really based in kind of sort of physiological well-being and um, and Having said that, it makes it sound like it might be a bit serious, but it is also a lot of fun. fun. It is a lot of fun. And it's um, people say that, you know, it's not just the exercise, it's the, it's the socialising, it's seeing people, it's actually um, having a reason to get up early in the morning and get cracking on the day to go and off and do exercise. appointment on your day, something yeah. to look forward to. Yeah, yeah. And, and you get up early, you go to it, and then you're sort of cracking for the rest of the day yeah. as well, yeah. which is really nice. So they're wonderful, yeah, yeah. I heard even as um, steady as you go, and, if, and you can help me with this one, Ree, um, that you can do the class and then um, you can transition into becoming a tutor. Is that correct? That is absolutely <laughs> correct. That's actually how it works. And so the way it works is that there's a, uh, with a new class, there's a 10-week class, and then um, right from the beginning, um, it's kind of, we kind of discuss that at the end of 10 weeks, um, the person who's teaching the class, me, has to move on to, to do it in another place. And so somebody from the group um, steps up to, to to run the class. And it's not as daunting as it sounds, and it doesn't have to be one person. It might be three people. One person might say, well, I can do the exercise part, and somebody else say, I can do the role, and somebody else says, I'll look after the money, you know. Because yeah. um, I probably should have mentioned that our exercise classes cost $2 a class, so that there is a small charge. Um, and yeah, so we, we kind of support people to take the class over, and it doesn't. It's not that daunting either, because actually, for steady as you go, you put on a CD, and a, there's a really a man with a beautiful voice, um, beautiful bass voice. Is talk it to you. <laughs> it's not Anthony. It's, a, it's someone from Otago, uh-huh. and he, um, he talks you through it. And so you just do. He tells you exactly what to do, and it's sort of all, all timed really well. And so the tutor is. Uh, or the facilitator puts that on and runs the program, and it's also their role is kind of to demonstrate the exercises and to kind of be, be um, as a, they kind of become the person who the rest of the group watches. So you need you need to feel confident doing the exercises, but you don't have to remember a set order or run through them because you've got this man in the background oh. telling you. I like that because yeah. that two kind of tainer thing. In terms yeah, of, yeah. You know, I, I don't um, catch your fish. I teach you how to fish. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. you can go and share the gifts that you've been given. Yeah. So that yeah. others might partake of those same gifts. Yeah. And then share them as well. Yeah, very much. And you know, it's 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 absolutely fabulous. Um, fabulous program. They all are, they're all wonderful. But we we are really looking for volunteers in this area. We're sort of looking for people to um, who might say, Yeah, I'd really like to help establish a class and run a class um in Steady as you go. Um would be great. Like as I say, we're getting Martinborough going, but it'd be wonderful to get Carterton up soon as well and mm-hmm. Greytown, you know, that would be really good. Um and we also would really like someone to say, Yep, I don't really want to commit to a class every week, but I will come along and learn how to do it so that I can be cover for tutors when they're oh, unwell nice. or they can't yeah. they can't um yeah. take their class. So um so we're definitely looking for people to help out with that. And um the, uh, the added bonus of volunteering in the exercise field is that actually you're doing exercise too, so that's, <laughs> that's quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The most important thing for me in, in that, Ree, is that as we get older, and we're all getting older, 
Uh, Are we? Tea. <laughs> she, some, said. some thinks it's a delusion, but hey. Mm. <laughs> some things you can't change. <laughs> some mornings, some some mornings, mornings feel tonight. older than not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some mornings. But mobility is a, is a key issue around not mm. only physical health, mm. Um, mm. but mental health as well. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So it's great mm. to be mm. involved. Absolutely. And, and all our facilitators and tutors would say, Participate to the level you can, to the level you are comfortable with, you know, mm-hmm. don't push it. And so Steady As You Go has five components. It sort of has warm-ups and it has um, exercises, seated exercises, then it has standing, then it has walking, then it warms down. Well, if walking is, if the walking exercises are not something you feel comfortable doing, then, then you know, um, stay stay seated. And sometimes people will walk, like walk right. in their seat. Yeah. And, yeah. That's, and that's, that's, that's fantastic. So it's very much, yeah. Yeah. I've seen one um, gentleman, it was, he wasn't able to lift his hands very far um, because he had some mobility issues and joint issues. But after a while doing Steady As You Go, mm. he was able to lift his hand Amazing. up. Yep. And so for him, that was a milestone. That was an achievement. Yeah, it's and huge. And there's those, yeah. Yep. Those little ones are huge. They are huge. They're absolutely huge. We've had people who... Um, don't use the walking stick very much anymore because of the sort of the gains they've made and steady as you go, all mm. sorts, yeah, people. Um, one of the things that we get told a lot, actually, is that people, because um, it also exercises eyes, um, mm. it's, it's top of head to bottom of feet, really. Um, it's, yeah, head to toe, that's the expression. <laughs> um, that the peripheral vision and also mm. over, sh- over shoulder, it actually mm. really helps with that, which is a fantastic thing if you're going for your licence, um, resetting your licence. Mm. You've sort of got that over shoulder movement developed well. That's, yeah. a, that's a really good thing. That um, Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. like everything, it impacts on different areas of your life. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it really does. Yeah. And I'd probably say we've also got a walk group and um, you can ring the office for more information on this too, but that's a, a walk group. It's called Walk and Talk and it walks around Queen Elizabeth Park and then has a cup of coffee. So that's, that's great. Yeah, so that's quite fun too. Yeah, yeah. So I better move on to Cathy's area because I've kind of spent quite a lot of time there <laughs> in my area. So Cathy, um, Cathy in, in our office, lovely Cathy, um, she organises monthly coffee mornings. So there's one in Masterton, then Carterton. Martinborough and Featherstone. So there's a coffee morning, an age consent coffee morning each month in those in those um, areas in those towns, and that includes morning tea. Um, has age concern notices of interest, and mm. there's lots of those. <laughs> and, We've always um, got something. Always got to say. something. <laughs> yep. Um, and sort of well-being information. And there's always a speaker, and the speaker might be somebody from an organisation that um, it might be police talking about keeping safe, it may be earthquake, it may be Mark Pacey talking about history, it may be somebody sharing their hobby, it's, but there's always a speaker of interest as well. So um, if you're interested in those, again, um, easy easy way to find information is call the office or, you know, magazine, it's all in there, where to go and, and what who the speakers are. Um, Rach, do you need to be a member to go to the coffee You don't mornings? need to be a member. No, you don't. Now, coffee mornings are $3 and they're $4 if you're not a member. Cool. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, you can anybody can come. And everybody is welcome. We love it. We love it when, when new people come along. That's fantastic. Um, once a month there's a trip. It's usually on the last Wednesday of the month there's mm. a trip. And it may be local or it may go a bit further afield. It might go to Wellington or sometimes it goes up to... Um, the rhododendrons at Combolton might be a trip that they um, oh, that's organised. Um, over to Fisherman's Table, over to yeah, so all around the place. At the moment, um, we're res- sort of keeping those to local trips at the moment, just because we're not sure what's happening out there with Omicron, and yeah. it's just yeah, so it's local. Um, there's also a men's cooking group. It's called Four One One, which is four ingredients, one pan, one person. And it's designed, it's for men, and it's designed to have men that are, who live alone to learn to cook and, um, or, or improve their cooking skills and, um, and learn to make some really nice um, sort of one-pot meals for one person. So, I like that. Um, I like that. Less dishes. Less, yeah, absolutely. right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that, that's gone really well. In fact, the second lot of um, men's cooking class which has turned into men's baking class because, oh. um, you know, like we really, we love to hear back from people and the people in the class were like, yeah, this is been great but now you know I really don't know how to make scones and so we're um, we're now moving into a baking yeah. class and we're going to keep running those and um, we run those with um, 
the, the community kitchen over at the centre, but we also, um, that, that's sort of um, with the support, financial support and um, sponsorship by Masterton Council, District Council, so that's great, that's really good, it's great to have friends that help us out yeah, so we can do, do those things. Um, now I did make a list of, um, oh yeah, the other thing I thought I could talk about, um, <laughs> if you're not sick of me, is our driver education classes, and they're, they're really important, these yeah. classes, and unfortunately they are a bit on hold at the moment, but um, I'm, I still thought it might be useful to talk about them, because one thing we find in the office is that um, for older people, that whole process of renewing licence and worrying about um, mm. whether the licence will be issued or not is a really big deal. That, and that, that whole idea of, um, you know, your car is just such an important thing for um, independence and Absolutely. convenience and, and um, people worry. And, of course, of course, we all worry about what happens if we don't have our licence anymore and can't, and can't get out and about. Mm. So um, the good thing about that is that we have some driver programs to kind of help driver education programs to help with that and to sort of make people feel better. Um, they don't guarantee that you'll get your licence, but they do sort of give you a, a feeling of confidence, I think, as you go for your licence. And mm. um, I have to say that since I've been doing these, my driving has definitely improved oh, a really? lot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, um, yes. <laughs> yeah. You might so, improved a lot. You slowed down or um, faster? Or what? <laughs> I think. Nice data. <laughs> Use your indicators. What were you like <laughs> well, oh, how long have we got? <laughs> yeah, I guess I opened myself up for that. Oh, <laughs> sorry, right? Over to you. I'll give you an example of how my driving's improved. Like I think I do think I um, scan a, a mm. further ahead and are sort of more aware of what might be coming at me from the side or what okay. you know. So I think mm -hmm. that that's improved, and I think. Um, I've improved at roundabouts, um, mm. and I've improved. I, I think I was over indicating, and that was sometimes confusing oh, for okay. um, for cars that might be near. So that that's helped me. And I've just kept up with road code. I've just it just mm. gives you the latest road code changes, and you know, like dreadfully, I hadn't looked at the road code since I got my license. You know, forty years ago. <laughs> so um, <laughs> it's quite good to to know what's happening. Um, yeah. So those are great. Now, there's a class called Staying Safe, and um, it, we, we had a little bit of feedback. People were a bit worried that it meant that we were going to be hopping in the car and assessing their driving, mm -hmm. but, but absolutely not. Staying Safe is a classroom-based program, and you come along for a day and you just work through kind of those things I was talking about, really, and it's it's wonderful. Yeah, a really good, cl really good class. Um, and then we've got a... Um, with, and and the, we do these with the Water Upper Road Safety Council and absolutely wonderful Bruce Pauline. So, I mean, that's a really common thing here is, is all the people that help us out and support us and are involved with us and partner with us is uh, quite incredible, you know. Um, so we've got these great volunteers, but we've also got these incredible other people in the community. And Bruce is just another example of um, someone who's really, you know, really behind us in what we're doing. He has a column. There's a column and in the magazine. Activating. Yep, mm -hmm. he does. So Bruce um, is sort of programs a class called Car Fit, and that's that's an excellent class where you come along with your car, and it's no assessment on your driving, but it's looking at you and saying, hey, your driving would be easier and easier on your body if you put your wing mirrors here, or mm -hmm. if you had your seat at this height, or actually if you put your seat back a little bit, or that that would be easier. So it's just kind of sort of the physio of being in your car, really. Oh, that's yeah. really good because sometimes I've known for when my children get in my car, yeah, they change this, the seating mm, arrangements, mm -hmm, mm. you know, the slouching back and all that kind of stuff. And mm. going, hey. Yeah. And so, yeah. But to know what's going to be good for you, yeah, yeah, um, you can change it back really well. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. you know, that's, the, I think that's really valuable. But it's, it's great. It's a really great class. And then we also have a class called Life Without a Car, and that's for when that, moment does come when you're not driving anymore and you've made that decision or maybe that decision's been made for you which is mm. a hard thing mm. so my best advice for that is to actually think about that before it happens like don't don't be shocked by that happening and just um you know I'm thinking about my own dad who was shocked and angry and and mm. just it was devastating for him so think about it first what are your options going to be when when you're no longer driving a car yeah. I'm just thinking about that Ree, because um uh, part of that is loss and grief, mm. loss of independence. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And so, and it know, changes so much in your life, it does, doesn't it? it? Does. Yeah, so that goes. Yep. So, how do you deal with that grief? 
Mm. How do you deal with that loss? Mm. Um, mm. It's not just about I can't drive. Mm. It's everything that goes with mm-hmm. it. Mm. So you know, it may yeah. be that we need, or the person who's going to not drive anymore or be that independent, uh, needs some other support. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Need to think yeah. about that as well. Yeah. And that that whole idea of like you know, I'll pop down to the supermarket, but now. No, you know, I can't. can't pop down to the supermarket, yeah. and I might have to ask somebody to, to pop down to the supermarket. And yeah. I don't really want to ask somebody, but then we come back to that get to know the people in your neighbourhood, and you might be able to go down and do your shopping when your neighbour does the shopping. So mm. it's sort of think about that stuff um, before before you really need to. And people are so willing to help. They are. You yeah, know, there is absolutely. that there is that sense of being scared to ask, perhaps in the first instance. But people, you know, when they are asked, you know, often they feel quite privileged mm. that they've been asked. Mm. You know, so so oh. don't be scared to ask mm. family what's, or neighbours. What's interesting for me is that, um, and this is to do with um, tourists, foreign people. Okay, a lot of the comments they make is New Zealanders are really friendly. Mm-hmm. The ones who don't really know it is New Zealanders. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> because they say, you know, uh, there's a lot of times I've seen where they'll say, you just be standing in the supermarket and someone go, hey, how was your day? Mm. And they're not used to that and where they come from. Mm. Interesting. But that's what mm. we as Kiwis do, except mm. for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, which seems mm. quite bizarre, really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we known for. We're proud. Yeah, yeah, aren't we? yeah. We're proud. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm one of those people that when I'm out on a walk, I say hello to everybody so that I go past. <laughs> and I, and so know, I. sometimes I, and I sort of think, you know, sometimes, well, I, the only time I mind if somebody's really obviously trying to avoid, trying to avoid my eye, eye contact. contact. <laughs> and I'm like, but I do, and I just think, and when people all, you know, when people say hello back, it's lovely, it? or yeah. sometimes people say hello first, and it's really nice, it and is. it's just like, yeah, so I think just, you know, and, I th- and another tip I've got there is if you see someone with a dog and you no. say lovely dog, you've kind of made a you've friend made a friend for life. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably me that's, that's that's telling you you've got a lovely dog because I'm that person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. So say hello. You know, mm, say hello. Right. Call out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, and and I guess coming back to isolation, if you're isolating, you know, you can you can sit quite a long way in your garden and still talk to your neighbour who's quite that's a long right. way in their garden. So you can still keep yeah. keep that going over the fence. Yeah, over, over the, the fence. Gates. We yeah. did that when we were in lockdown. Yeah. Yeah. We, did. Yeah. we had over the fence mm. conversations. Mm. And I re- I know in my street. Um, there are people singing in the street. Just oh, sit down. Nice. Playing. Wow. I bet you started was that, that off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was one of them who was singing. I can I imagine. Yeah. I, can I was one of them who was singing. Yeah, but, yeah. funny. you know, it, it grew the community together. Yeah. The street together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, oh. you know. Yeah. Even like harvest time is now. Yes. Yes. Harvest That's time. right. And if you've got surplus. Yeah. Yeah. You That's can a good call way. out over the fence, or, yeah. or leave it at your mailbox, mm. and, and yeah, yeah. you know, with a little sign or yeah. something like that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we actually put that in the last magazine. We said if you've got extra fruit, sit out at your sit at your gate in a deck chair and yeah. with a sign, and give yeah. it to people and have yeah, a chat. Nice. So it'd be like yeah. I get my grandson. Uh, he's six. And, uh, Come on then, let's go find some water, Chris. Mm. And so we'll go get some water, Chris, and then walk around the streets. Would you like some or nice. get oh, from the nice. garden? Yeah, because nice. he needs to learn as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Learn it because mm. um, there will come a stage where I can't get it, so he has to get it for me. <laughs> <laughs> you have motive. Yes, <laughs> you have motive, absolutely. <laughs> uh, we had um, a story I heard during the last lockdown, which was just so sort of heartwarming, you know. Um, I was talking with one of our members who's a woman in her 80s and very close to 90 and her husband and they, they were living together and their neighbour was a young guy in his 30s and he just spent, he'd do shopping for them and he'd do all sorts for them and um, when it was her husband's birthday he learnt to make a pavlova and wow. brought a pavlova over and I was just like yeah, that's oh, nice. that's really lovely so that sort of amazing thing memory making, aren't they? Yeah. They're very yeah. special moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, mm. and we did learn a lot well I did anyway and with the, the lockdowns mm. You know, yeah. more about gardening mm. Yeah. Mm. Because Cause you've got the time too. Mm. All about baking bread. The only thing I learned about breaking bread is that you have to have loads of butter and jam. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. You have to have <laughs> loads of butter and jam. <laughs> yeah. 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 It just means you need to go on more walks. You know? that, that, yeah, yeah, it all rolled into Yeah, yeah look, it's funny. It's part of the journey. <laughs> yeah, part of the journey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so there are some of the 
um, activities mm-hmm. that we do at Age Concern. Mm-hmm. Um, next time we meet, because uh, it's nearing the end of our session. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, nearing the end of our session. I'll talk a, lot about, a bit more about elder abuse mm-hmm. and what the signs and symptoms are and how you can get in contact with our organization, as we've mm-hmm. seen lots of times, but also talking about um, enduring power of attorneys, mm. uh, wills, um, because sometimes in our busyness we forget about them, mm. yeah. or that we've made our will a long time ago, and things have changed. Mm. Yeah, I remember of, uh, one person who um, didn't change their will, but the person that they were leaving it to was had actually passed away before them. Oh, oh right, yes. Yeah. yes. So it wasn't up to date. So you know, getting mm. there and having a look at what's current now. Yeah. Um, you know, who can I have my power of attorney, my attorney? Yeah. Um, because sometimes that has changed as well. Yeah. And so we need to look into those types of issues. Yes. How do we keep ourselves safe in different areas mm. of our, our lives, not only uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, socially? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so that um, we can be, we can add value because there's, a stigma out there that I'm uh, that I believe anyway is called ageism. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, people say when you're 65, uh, you had it, you got to retire. Mm. No, life. There used to be a song, "Life Begins at 40." <laughs> well, I tell you what, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 60 is the okay. new 40. Yeah, yeah. Right? New 40. 60 is the new yeah, 40. Yeah. We're living longer. Yeah, yeah. Yep. We're more active. Than 60 we years young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And there's a lot more things that we can do mm. um, that wasn't done in the past. Mm. Okay, mm. And we need to push media. We need to push the media to recognise that, actually, because you know, it absolutely infuriates me when I read an elderly woman in her 60s had a car crash. <laughs> and I thought, oh. <laughs> yeah, hang on, hang on. Who's <laughs> you know, yeah, calling who elderly? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just some of the words, some of the language around it. The word elderly itself is, a, is not a word that age concern uses. No, we, no, you know, we no. say older people, and we, we definitely don't. Elderly conjures up. A completely different image of of who we are. Well, when we yeah. look at it, say yeah. um, if we're five, you know, my sister who's thirteen, she's old. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. She's old. Yeah. When I'm thirteen, <laughs> yeah. my mum who's thirty, yeah, she's old. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. Yeah. The question can be asked: What is old? Mm-hmm. From which perspective are you looking at? That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. If I get caught in one. Um, Lens that's 65 is old, mm-hmm. you know, for those who are 70, that's not old at all. And you're as old as you feel, yeah, apparently. That's right. yes. <laughs> and sometimes I feel older than maybe I actually am, but uh, yeah, so you know, if you can, if you feel young, you are young, yeah. yeah. Well, my aunt, she's funny, I think she's funny. She's just had a game of tennis, right? And she goes, oh, I've got to take um, some scones down to those old people down there. She's 82. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. That's she's still playing nice. tennis. She's still active. Yeah. Right. 82. Yeah, it's she's 82. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I don't play tennis with her because, nope, I don't want to lose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Again, At least you know your limits, Anthony. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Again, it's um, knowing and valuing. valuing. Mm. I read this book once and it said this. If you had an older person in your house, you've got a treasure in your house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The difficulty is knowing how to tap into that treasure trove. Mm. And also to tap into that treasure trove because sometimes we keep the lid Forget. on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which is, you know, not it's a shame. Not a good thing. Mm. It's a shame. Mm. Because it's with our older people that our younger people learn. Yeah. Yeah. What mm. they did in the past, the stories mm. of the past. They're our history bearers. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And yeah. if we don't use them, we miss out. Mm. Like I was saying to my um, children, my grandfather, he was an amazing cook. Um, if I don't teach them his recipes, mm. those recipes will die. Mm. Yeah. And then the next generation has lost out yeah, yeah, on right. his gift. Mm. So just remember that those mm. um, who are older, bear lots of treasures mm. all we need to do is ask and sit with them yeah. mm. and share those treasures with them that's right nice so yeah mm. yeah so that's 
where we are at the moment. And thank you, ladies, for joining me today. Thank you. Um, thank for you. our first you. program. Yay. Aging with Attitude. Yay. Hey. <laughs> ladies, you've done an extremely good job, and I thank you so much. <laughs> oh, I didn't have to press too much buttons. You took it all over. No. <laughs> 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 we had an um, open invitation to talk. <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> not, yeah. Let's sign off now. So, Lindsay, one last word. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Kia ora. Hey, Cornada. <laughs>